few months, maybe a year ago, a doctor from the, who was a consultant from the World Health Organization came and gave another talk. Then a bunch of doctors are actually like secretly giving themselves these treatments because they see it works. And if doctors seem fairly agreed that this looks good, it's useful, there should be more trials. And I don't like going to random websites on the web to try and mm. see these things. That's just kind of sketchy. Why is there no like real clinical data and backed up support on these anti-aging techniques that even doctors seem to agree on? Um, all right, first of all, I don't recommend eating M&Ms. Uh, no. misspoke. <laughs> <laughs> At least not Other if you want to live longer. Uh, but yeah, I know what you mean, m, &M. Uh, There's a few answers in there. Uh, one is that there are published studies and many of us are working very hard to, to try these, as, as I pointed out. Um, but trials are expensive. Each patient's $10,000, so you can see how quickly it adds up. But now that we have the clock to measure, I think things will move much quicker because otherwise it's going to be a very long trial. Um, there are probably 15 to 20 trials with NMN and related molecules in progress, so they will come out. There are some so far that have been published. Uh, there's one with NR that actually showed there was no improvement in blood sugar, so that one was a negative trial. Then there was one also that came out from uh, affiliated with a lab at MIT that showed ALS patients did do, did do better with um, a combination of NR and terostilbene, which is related to resveratrol and red wine. Um, so yeah, that bottom line is um, I, I see, see it as my role as an educator, communicator now, and with this platform that's come with the book to be able to sort out which is BS from reality. And there's a lot of BS out there. But there are really good studies that are coming out all the time and a body of literature that nobody has time to read or to sort through. Uh, and that's what I hope to do for everybody. Uh, NMN versus NR. Uh, OK, so N NR is nicotinamide riboside, which is similar to NMN without a phosphate group. Uh, NMN and NR. NR is cheaper than NMN. Um, as a professor at Harvard Medical School, I don't recommend anything and I certainly don't talk about supplements and I don't work with any supplement companies. That's my disclaimer. Um, if you ask why would I take an NMN and why would my father, uh, partly it's availability. We have a stash of it um, that we've tested, uh, but that doesn't help, help you. What, what I think would help you is uh, go to the website that I've got on the book. Uh, honestly, I'm not promoting it. I've written down everything that I can say about NMN and NR. Um, I can also tell you that NMN is more stable uh, on the shelf, and if NR gets a little bit wet or is out for too long, it'll degrade into nicotinamide, and I wouldn't take high doses of nicotinamide. It may have the opposite effect. Um, but that's the main reason. Now, in mice, they've both shown remarkable effects to protect the body of those animals, and clinical trials are ongoing with both molecules. Um, so at this point, I really couldn't say one is better than the other. So you have promising technology. Five years from now, you find the, the treatment that works. Five to 10 years later, the FDA approves it. And now you're going through the insurance system. Clearly, this is like a blockbuster drug of, of our time. Do you have any thoughts on how that will be handled when suddenly you can say, go to your doctor, go back 10 years? Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing we need to talk about. What happens when this happens? Now, I don't know if it's going to be five or ten years. The, the, I mean, the, the NMN stuff is, is here already. You can go buy that. But the reprogramming, early days, we don't think it's dangerous in mice, at least. We put it into the mice for over a year, and they're, they're healthy. They're not a giant tumor. But yeah, let's talk about what happens when this comes, hopefully within our lifetimes. What does the world look like? Uh, so first of all, it'll, let's say it's for glaucoma. This is where the first trials will be done. We have a company called Iduno, full disclosure. Um, so you can treat glaucoma. Okay, so glaucoma patients, if all goes well, get their vision back within a few weeks. But the world will know that this is a, a reset. What's to stop a doctor in Costa Rica giving this IV to their patients? Nothing. Nothing. That's where it'll begin. It'll spread if it works. Um, hopefully, those people will not be sick from it. Uh, but then project another 20 years. Will people be banging down the doors of their doctors 
saying give it to me or else. Um, probably what will actually happen is that there are doctors that are more willing than others to prescribe things. And uh, in the same with the case of with, with metformin, you can find doctors that have read the literature and they're okay with it. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be interesting an interesting world where you can, at age 30, say, I don't want to get any older. Yeah, a lot of ethical things. Uh, one of the things that Matt and I put in the book was, uh, for all those people who say, whoa, this is way too much, I don't want this, uh, we write, we, we don't want you to live any, any time longer than you want to either. Uh, so we're not forcing this on anyone, but if you have a choice, that's great. We also say, we both believe that you, you should have the choice to die when you want to as well. So it's important to balance it out. Thanks, good question.